Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain about the VHDL code part for ring counter. So in the last video, I started this ring counter and uh, explanation as well. So let us have a glance over that ring counter. We have considered a four bit ring counter. So four bit means the four flip flops are connected in cascade. Here ring counter comes under the category of synchronous counter. That's why a clock pulse is common for all the flip flops. Okay. And another important thing is only two important points are there. One is, one is the output of each and every flip flop is connected as the input for the second flip flop, next flip flops, and the output of last flip flop is connected as the input of the first flip flop. Okay, so these are the with the, these two points we can construct a ring counter. And another thing is the sequence table. Sequence table says how many number of clock pulses that it can take to count the number of clock pulses or to repeat the state. So there are four clock pulses it has taken 0 to 1. So 0 is the initial state. Again, when you go to the third state, it goes to the final state. When you apply the fourth clock pulse, what automatically it gives you the repeated sequence. Okay. And this sequence we can represent in a state diagram or we can say it's a sequence diagram as well. So all the uh, group, all the states are represented in a sequence. Nothing but it's a nothing but a ring form. It's not a, a nothing but a ring shape. That's why it is a ring counter. Okay. So finally, we can say that a ring counter takes uh, n number of clock pulses. A ring counter takes n number of clock pulses to repeat the sequence. So we can say it counts. It is used to count the n number of clock pulses. It is used to count the n number of clock pulses. Very, very important. Ring counter counts n number of clock pulses. <coughs> now coming to the VHDL code coming to the VHDL code. So VHDL code in your uh, digital integrated circuits and applications or digital logic design subjects, the VHDL code is very important for all the types of digital logic circuits. Okay. So VHDL code starts with, uh, we know two important statements, library and package. So first one is library, library IEEE, library IEEE. And use IEEE dot use IEEE dot std underscore logic underscore one one six four dot all dot all. This is the package. Now we know the VHDL code consists of two important parts. One is the entity, another one is architecture. Entity is the place where we can in initiate the inputs and output. So where we can instantiate the inputs and outputs and the architecture is a part where we are going to describe the behavior of your hardware model. So first one is entity, 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 what is the name of that ring counter? So take ring underscore counter, anything here you can take any name. So entity ring counter is ports. So inputs and outputs are considered as ports. So port, port, clock, port, clock, in, in, std underscore logic. It is a single bit and reset pin, reset pin to reset all the flip flops initially. Suppose if any data is there that we can make it to zero by using this pin reset in it is also input port std underscore logic and output pin q output pin is nothing but a four bit output so q out std underscore logic underscore one one sorry vector std logic vector of three down to zero it is a four bit of data it is a 4 bit data so 3 down to 0 and ring counter and ring counter okay so what we have done we have taken the entity part and port ports are nothing but inputs and outputs so if you see this ring counter we are having a clock pulse of course another thing is reset pin reset pin which is common for all the flip flops this is also common to reset all the flip flops at a time. 
okay another thing is it is not having the input it is having the input but we are not externally providing the input hope you understand each and every flip flop has the input pin but we are not externally providing any input that's why we are not specifying that port input port is not specified we have clock input and reset input just to operate this but we don't have any specific input as d because each and every input is depending on the output of the previous state hope you understand that's why we have not specified any input port here but we have an output port output port which is a 4 bit information now coming to the architecture coming to the architecture architecture behavioral of ring counter architecture behavior of ring counter is is let us consider a signal because the output q is output q is every time we are taking the same q inside the flip flop okay the output of first flip flop is connected as the input okay that's why the original output what we have specified as a q in the entity we cannot use that q here because that is completely specified as output okay but we need an internal output signal that should be a bidirectional signal so that's why q temp std underscore logic underscore vector signal is a bidirectional signal we are not specifying whether it is input or output that's why we have specified inside the architecture understand so 3 down to 3 down to 0 3 down to 0 so is equal to is equal to initially we are taking all the outputs as 0 okay temporary signal we have made it to 0 begin begin process process see in the process we are taking the ports which are having changes so clock and reset clock and reset again begin begin see first we need to apply reset pin first we should apply reset pin reset will give you one triggering output in the among the four inputs okay we have created the code like this otherwise you can take one zero 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 here in the q temp output we can take one zero 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 and then we can continue with the reset pin as when reset is enabled outputs are zero so otherwise we can uh, simply count the uh, number of clock pulses like that so if reset is equal to one if reset is equal to one then q temp is equal to q temp is equal to zero 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 one Q temp is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0001. That means uh, by taking the reset pin as 1, we are taking one of the outputs as 1. We are taking one of the outputs as 1. Then the sequence starts. So now else if else if what happens? Whenever the rising edge of the clock occurs, rising edge of clock rising edge of clock then then what happens q temp q temp of 1 1 goes to 0 2 goes to 1 3 goes to 2 4 goes to again 1 like that 4 goes to 3 so 1 is assigned with the data which is there in the 0 and q temp 2 is assigned with q temp of 1 and q temp q temp of 3 is assigned with q temp of 2 and one more is q temp of 4 q temp of 0 
uh, otherwise we can write it here q temp of 0 is assigned with q temp of 3 okay that means the data is repeating the data is uh, uh, changing from one state to another state okay light walks we have mentioned in the previous ring counter diagram and if and process and now we have assigned q to this q temporary okay so changes we have made on this q temporary signal and then we have assigned it to the final port and end behavior end behavior see coding is of completely our wish we can uh, define the code in our own terminology if you are having another plan then that also is accepted okay that is completely of our wish okay coding is not a specific arrangement which should be like this only okay logic may be in any way but the output should be satisfied okay this is the vhdl code for the ring counter in the next video i will explain about the johnson counter and its vhdl code thank you